eight millimeter Mauser from 1938. There we go, got the clip jammed up a little bit. $2,497. These are getting stuck in the chamber just a little bit. Um, nothing too major, but I am noticing there is a, a legitimate pop as it uh, gets over. You, you know what I mean if you've shot bolt-action military surplus rifles before. Two thousand four hundred forty-four. Clip number two. Two thousand four hundred eleven. Two thousand three hundred eighty-nine. Two thousand four hundred thirty-three. All right, everything is normal. Two thousand four hundred seventy. Okay. Two thousand three hundred ninety-nine. So that was our time on the range. Our velocity low was two thousand three hundred eighty-nine and our velocity high was 2,497. That gives us a spread from lowest to highest of 108 feet per second and an average of 2,450.8 feet per second. So this ammunition velocity wise is basically exactly in line with all of the other ammos in this weight category, which is about 150 to 200 grains. And it's only 30 feet per second lower than our other Greek ammos that we've shot before. So this is exactly what we'd expect for this ammunition. Every single one of these rounds fired correctly, which is a very pleasant thing. This is Greek 8mm Mauser from 1938. It has 20 cartridges in a box, 7.9 SS, that's the loading, PCH, which stands for Powder and Cartridge Company Hellenist or Greek, and then it has the date on it of 1938. I'll open this up. A viewer sent this to me and the box is not in great shape. However, the ammo looks perfect. So I'm assuming this is actually supposed to be a part of the box, but it fell off and I'll pull one of these out. You can tell that they are packaged in there, 5555. Five, five, five. And on the head stamp, you can see um, CH, which is the uh, company, probably Cartridge Hellenist. And then there are the two six pointed stars on either side. Six-pointed stars are an industry standard for brass-cased ammunition around the world. And then it just says 7.92, which is the cartridge right there. While I was pulling apart the bullets for my Greek 8mm, I noticed something. And it is that some of these rounds have different head stamps. So this one on the left is PCH38. This one on the right is Star CH Star 792. And they both have a green sealant. Now, it is possible that somewhere in the process between these leaving the factory and them getting to me, they got switched around in boxes. However, I do not think that is the case because they both have the same color of sealant, and I've checked the bullets, and my Greek ammo has several different kinds of bullets, but all of these bullets match each other. All of these bullets are exactly the same. So, I think that this box was made with two different um, head stamps in there, and the ammo is made the same, so there's really no reason other than the head stamp to not include them in the same box. Just thought that was interesting. In 1908, two Greek ammunition companies merged together and became to be known predominantly by three different names, with a fourth coming a little bit later. So those three names were this Greek name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but the acronym is usually either EEPK or EPK, so sometimes you'll see head stamps labeled EPK uh, or just PK. And sometimes the P symbol is the Greek letter P, uh, which is what we in English usually call pi. That's in a lot of math stuff. The second name is the French name, Padrerie et Cartoucherie Hellenique. 
I probably pronounced that wrong as well, PCH, and that is how our ammo today is labeled. And finally, in English, it is known as the Greek Powder and Cartridge Company, sometimes called GPCC. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to say Greek Powder and Cartridge Company because I speak English the best, and I don't want to butcher all these foreign languages. Finally, later, the same factory would become known as Percol or Pyrocol. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, and this factory still makes ammunition today. Greek ammo was produced domestically from the 1920s through either 1940 or 1941. The reason I'm a little bit unclear on that is because in April of 1941, Germany would succeed in conquering Greece. In fact, they would begin conquering Greece and succeed very quickly, as happened in the Second World War. So I have not seen ammunition labeled from 1941, but it might possibly be out there. I just don't know. Maybe somebody will comment on this video and share a little bit more information. However, most Greek ammo that you will find being imported into the United States right now is from the late 1930s or 1940. However, after the war, Greece continued producing ammo until the 1950s, and I have a review on this channel of Greek ammo from, I think, 1953, if I remember correctly. So Greece did continue making 8mm Mauser ammo after the war, and then during that period of time that they were conquered by Germany, they were producing ammunition for Germany. I've never seen any of those rounds, but I have heard about them floating around. There are multiple different markings, marking this ammo specifically on the head stamp or on the boxes, and they are slightly different depending on what you might see. Typically, the way that it's understood is that ammunition that is labeled in Greek is for the Greek military itself, whether that's for the army or the navy or whatever, but it's staying within Greece for domestic use. And if it is marked in some ways, uh, I've seen people say I-38A, then that means that it was being sent possibly to the Spanish during the Spanish Civil War, and I've heard that that was exported through Germany and sold to both sides. However, typically what's understood is that if ammunition is marked PCH, it is being sent to the British. Well, you might be asking, what would the British be doing with 8mm Mauser? And that's a really good question. It's actually an interesting story, so I'll share it really quick. In the 1930s, Britain was trying to adopt a rimless cartridge. They were using 303 British, which has a rim, which is harder to work in auto loaders like machine guns and semi-automatic rifles. So they were looking to adopt a rimless cartridge. However, later in the 1930s, they realized that this likely wasn't going to happen as war was steaming up in Europe. So because of this, they ended up buying some machine guns that they could, and those end up, ended up being Bessa machine guns. The Bessa machine gun is a uh, Czech machine gun in 8mm Mauser. They were used often in tanks and armored vehicles, and they're chambered in 8mm Mauser. So for that reason, they needed to get 8mm Mauser ammunition, and a lot of that came from Greece until Greece was invaded. Great Britain ended up using the Bessa machine gun from 1939 through to the end of the war. Our bullets measured from 197.1 grains to 199.1 grains. So that gives us a spread from lowest to highest of 2 grains and an average of 197.9 grains as we measure all of those out. So what this gives us is a 198 grain bullet, which is really common in this category. This ammunition being labeled SS is supposed to be a 198 grain bullet. Here are the bullets. The base here is pretty wide. A lot of bullets have a base that is um, a little further in there, showing less lead on the bottom. There is a crimp, and it's just a normal boat tail, pointed bullet, as you can see here. These rounds are magnetic. I do not believe they have a steel core. I believe it's just a bimetal jacket that makes them magnetic. Our powder measured from 43.7 grains to 44.3 grains, which gives us a spread of 0.6 grains from lowest to highest, and an average of 43.94 grains. Again, this is exactly what we'd expect, so there's not really much to talk about here. Finally, the powder is just a normal flake powder. All of the Greek 8mm that we've looked at on the channel so far, and the other rounds I've seen, all of them have flake powder. All right, finally, let's cover my opinion of this ammunition, especially as it relates to the modern shooter. First of all, for collecting, I think the same was really interesting being uh, World War II ammunition, and being sent to a major power in World War II. This is just fascinating ammunition to get your hands on. And also, I think this is kind of cool because it's very well manufactured. The deviation between the rounds and some of those details were a little bit higher. Like, it's not sniper grade, obviously. But for going out and shooting, it seems to work really well. 
especially since I had no hang fires or dud rounds. They all fired properly. So if you find this ammo, especially if it's in the condition I found it in, I would say it's good to go. Now, I always want to be careful making recommendations because ammunition can vary a lot just from one lot to another lot. Yours might not have been stored as well as mine was, but for me, this ammunition worked flawlessly. Now, I do need to say this ammunition is corrosive. Obviously, you need to take the proper precautions there. I have a video on cleaning corrosive ammo that you can watch if you want to see how I do it. However, there are other ways as well, and obviously there are a lot of people in the comments saying that my way is stupid. All of that being said, I am 8mm Mauser Man, and I fired Greek 8mm Mauser ammo from 1938, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Game John. Game John.